Hello, teachers, and good afternoon, and welcome to our uh, uh, Thursday stream. No, this is our seventh uh, installment of our webinar series. No, okay, this will now be second to the last as we end our um, our March series for this year. Okay, but before we start, now before we continue with our program for today, with our session for today, we'd like to invite everyone to first do share our link for today. No, uh, I know our, our teachers are busy right now. No, given the uh, the preparations for high flex setup, the preparations for uh, piloting face-to-face -face encounters. And I've seen no, uh, more and more training sessions are actually now being done on-site and we're excited also to do that here at KTS. But for the meantime, we'll be here online okay, for everyone's safety. Uh, so please do share our link to invite more educators into our link for today. Okay? So teachers, good afternoon. And um, I'd like to first greet no, uh, those who are in the chat, no, who are live in the chat right now, okay? who have greeted already in our chat box today okay so let me first uh start my uh my greetings with uh, to um to sir jeffrey beltran yes thursday thursday okay tears for learning again according to sir jeffrey no teacher patricia yvonne katungal okay always here no? teacher um um uh, yvonne teacher glenda uh, lauren teacher melanie dalingay teacher roxanne altea teacher uh, professor uh madavalan um uh, i think from um from india yes okay Teacher Concepcion Dulay, Teacher Maria Victoria Ramirez, Teacher Riza Ann Lebrisa, Teacher Oremesak Joyce, Teacher Lamberto Pilatan, Teacher Joella Giriba, Teacher Lord Lena, Teacher Joyce Casimiro, yes, with e-certificate po for today, Teacher Kathleen Jane Balsa, Teacher Carol Sombria, Teacher Genevieve G. Daep, Teacher Angela Arellano, Teacher Joyce Casimiro, of course, not to our... Um, um, our speaker, uh, Ms. Uh, Stephanie Howell, good afternoon. Uh, Sir Andy, Teacher Andy Padernelia, Teacher Gently Grace Pasqua, Teacher Sandata 
Villarreal. And uh, of course, to Pastor Manny Garcia, always, always blessing our session. Teacher uh, RM uh, Anna Lizelle, Teacher Arlene Alberto, Teacher May Baisa Versosa, Teacher Romel Rosita, uh, I'm glad that you're here despite your busy schedule. Teacher Edna Recafort, Teacher Riza Ann, Teacher uh, Dominadora, Teacher Maria Jepsi, Teacher Alia Pakasirang, and to the rest of our viewers for today, good afternoon and welcome to our session for today. We have an amazing session for today. Okay? We'll be talking about the top five shifts in education. Okay? What are the uh, um, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, shift defining uh, uh, in education in the 21st century. And this is a very important discussion because this will be something that we can anchor as our, ourselves no? uh, as we move forward no? post-pandemic. Okay? Because even the pandemic also introduced uh, changes, no? um, shifts in education, and we would want to know exactly what these are. Of course, okay? uh, there are many shifts no? and uh, changes happening uh, in the educational landscape. And our speaker for today, We'll be focusing on some of them, the top five shifts in education. And we'll see how these shifts are affecting education and how these shifts will ultimately shape the Philippine education. Okay, And of course, um, teachers, no, I'd like to invite you first. No, Let's also share in the chat okay, so that our speaker for today would also know what do we think about the top five shifts in education. So not necessarily top five. But can you mention in the chat right now, okay, what are the shifts happening in, uh, in education today? Okay, so, so that our speaker would have a sort of an idea, you know, what, what, are, what do we have in mind, you know, and what, what are the things we are thinking about when we're thinking about uh, shifts. Okay, so let's wait for some uh, answers in the chat. Yeah, excited na raw, or they're excited for the new learnings, okay? Okay. Uh, Yes, teachers, no, please keep your comments coming. No, our speaker can see uh, your comments uh, in the chat. Okay? So what do you think are the shifts? No? What are the things that are changing in education okay? um, here at, uh, in, in the 21st century or at least no, post-pandemic? Okay? We're still waiting. We're counting delay, of course, no, from, uh, from our uh, this, uh, YouTube. Okay? Uh, from, from our stream to YouTube. Okay? So we're waiting for some answers. Again, yeah. Okay, from Teacher May Baisa Versosa. Okay, um, he said, no movement towards global trends in education. Very appropriate. Yung theme natin no, for March, no talking about global education, global trends. No, what's happening in the world? No, according to Teacher um, James, okay, uh, face to face to multi modality of learning. Okay, so it's as if no um, teaching is not is uh, not yet hard. No, and then we still have to think about multi-modality of teaching and learning process. This one is from teacher um, Kadija Chanhad Mitani, uh, Digital Innovations, okay, from teacher Lavern Marie uh, Tugaon. Okay, teaching modality are shifting. Okay, we are definitely uh, changing you know, how we are conducting the teaching and learning process. Teachers, please keep them coming so that our speaker can have a reference also what's, what's, uh, what are in your minds in terms of when we talk about um, uh, shifts in education. Okay, so let me now introduce our speaker for today. Okay, uh, and it's my honor. No, she's not new in our uh, community. She's uh, she had given a webinar before on uh, accessibility features of um, Google Workspace for Education, and she again, no, once again, said yes to our community, and we're always thankful. Okay, so let's welcome uh, our speakers. Miss Stephanie has been working in Pekerenton School since uh, 2014. Uh, Stephanie has spoken at conferences such as uh, ISTE, ITIP, and OATC, and her most recent achievements are being part of the team named ISTE's uh, Distinguished District, uh, WOSU Leadership Award, a Google Innovator, and PLSD's Innovative Leader Award. Stephanie is one of the founding members of Global GEG and Gold EDU. As, uh, Stephanie has Master's in Curriculum and Instruction and Educational Leadership. Let us welcome into our stream our speaker for today, Ms. Stephanie Howell. Hi, Hi everyone. Steph. How are you? Yeah, uh, Glad to have you back here in our committee. We're again excited to what you're going to share with us today. Okay? Um, and so that just to take 
too much of your time, okay? But uh, before maybe we start, okay, I would like to ask first, what exactly will we cover for today? And what are the things that we will not be able to cover given that, that time limitation for today? Because this topic is huge because we're talking about top five shifts and each shift actually is almost equivalent to one webinar. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about the top five shifts in education that I see. And I loved what, I can't even find it in the chat right now. You guys are blowing it up and I absolutely love it. So keep that going. Um, but it was that global peace. And it's so true. Like I'm in America. I would have never connected with you if it wasn't for that pandemic or for Google Innovator. And so we are seeing that movement. There it is, May. Um, that movement towards global trends. And I'm like, oh my, when I was reading that comment, I was like, yes, like before we couldn't connect with each other, the technology, the way that we set up our classroom, everything is changing. And so I'm really excited to kind of share what I think are some of the top five shifts and hopefully share some resources with you um, of some shifts that our teachers are making. Sorry. Thank you for that, Miss Stephanie, and uh, we're excited for your sharing, okay? So while Miss Stephanie is preparing her presentations, now again, teachers, okay, please be reminded that this is a certified session, which means that you'll be getting a certificate at the end of the session. Just make sure that you answer the evaluation link that we will be giving at the end of our session. So, Miss Stephanie, good luck on your session. Teachers, um, enjoy the session. I'll be in the chat. I'll definitely be uh, engaging you uh, in a different discussion also in the chat box. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get started in talking about these top five shifts and keep them coming because I'm interested to see what you think are some of those top shifts in education. And I loved, I just saw like wider internet access. Yeah, when I was growing up, I mean, internet was dial up. It was very slow. It was... Um, hard to reach people where today you can be online really quickly. A lot of different businesses have it as well. So that was a good point too, that device and internet access, our technology has definitely stepped up um, to peer. So right here is the bit.ly to the slides. Feel free to hop on because there's a lot of different hyperlinks in this presentation and you are more than welcome to access any of those different links. Also, we just put it in the chat. So feel free to as well, click that bit.ly link and join on the slides and use any of these resources. Okay, so again, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. I'll try to keep up. Um, but if I don't answer your question, the best way to reach me is on Twitter. So if you are on Twitter, feel free to send me a DM and I'm more than happy to connect with you and answer any questions individually if I do miss your question in the chat. So right here, um, Mrs. How 24 is my Twitter. So feel free to follow me or, um, Connect with me that way if you have a question or have an idea or just want a thought partner, happy to be that person. So the first shift that I am seeing is classrooms are changing. And we kind of talked about this in the chat. I know somebody mentioned like the modalities of the classroom. And so one shift that we are seeing is this blended learning approach. Because we have so much technology, we are using more, more, more technology because of the access, because of the ease, because of... Um, so many different reasons, <clears throat> we're starting to see more technology in the classroom. However, we still want to keep those good practices where students are offline as well. And so where students are on the technology for some activities, but then they're also doing different activities that might be offline or off the Wi-Fi, um, where they can kind of explore more of their learning as well. So we wanna find a good mix. And where I find this good mix of offline and online activities is through blended learning. And so when students and teachers are using blended learning, we can see their motivation going up. We can see a lot of different things happening. And so it's kind of exciting to see. And so one of the ways that we have been using um, blended learning is with self-pace. So right here is a roadmap. Um, and if you click this link, it's going to take you to a YouTube video with more. And in the description, there should be resources to slide resources as well. But right here, there's a bunch of different templates that are kind of blank. This idea, it came from Amanda Sanderval on Twitter. And what she did with her students is she had like a self-paced activity. 
So students work on these little boxes one at a time. And what they do is then they check in. So if they need a teacher check-in, they can check in at these little boxes right here. And as a teacher, again, there's so many different templates I've seen. I've seen like roadmaps look like this. I've seen roadmaps that kind of go this way. Um, Akila, she does a great job with these roadmaps. Hers kind of go different directions as well. And she likes to add her bit emoji in these scenes. But with these, again, students do different activities. You can add emojis for students to have timers on different activities. You can add uh, hyperlinks if you need them to go to certain websites. And it's just nice because everything is in one place. And so a lot of times with our students, we'll see them and they learn at different paces. And we learn that a lot from COVID as well, where students are learning different things at different paces. And we need to allow that. We need to allow students that if they need more time or they need to rewatch a video, they have that opportunity. We also need it so we can conference with students in small groups. So it's more intentional, the learning, and we are able to help them where they're getting stuck and where students are starting to take that ownership over and really becoming that student leader in that classroom. And so again, you can build in different checkpoints. You can have different roadmaps. So like right here, I might have um, a roadmap that is for one group of students that are focused on maybe a certain type of skill. And then I might use this roadmap for another way. So I'm able to differentiate in my classroom pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> I've also seen teachers where they make it like a must do, can do kind of roadmap. So you must do this first activity. This is a can do if you're like, you want a challenge. And then like an expire to do, like you're ready to kind of extend your knowledge even more. And some students might just stay at that may do level. Other students might go into that can do or aspire to do. And so creating these different roadmaps to help with that differentiation, to help with that small group meeting time can really help um, with student learning. Another way is student choice. And so what I did when I first kind of started, which was um, five years ago as an instructional technology coach, is I gave my students choices <clears throat> and it was too many choices. I was providing them multiple different choices and they were starting to probably be overwhelmed. And so I love this or that. This is a great way that you can kind of use in your classroom. And again, down here in the speaker notes, you can find additional resources. But what the students can do in this setting is they can choose, do you wanna read chapter one or do you want to listen to chapter one? Okay, we've got so many different learning styles. We've got students that need um, things that are audio. We need students that have things that are visual. We have students that need things that are kinesthetic. And so because of those, all those different learning types, we have to kind of provide different options for our students on how they're going to access the material. And so with technology, it has allowed us to listen to different readings a lot easier than when we didn't have that technology. Um, it's allowed us to create using video instead of using maybe paper. And so on here, again, you can kind of decide, okay, what do I want my students to do? Maybe I want them to do um, this activity, but they can also choose this activity. So there's all different kinds of ideas um, in this resource for you. And you can just kind of see again, like, Maybe you want to complete a worksheet that's on Wiser, or maybe you want to complete an Edulastic assignment. Maybe you want to create a paper slides that's non-digital, or maybe you want to create a Google Slides that is digital. Same idea, it's just, is it going to be on paper or is it going to be offline? And allowing our students that choice can really help, again, with that ownership of their learning. Another thing is maybe they want to share their presentation on Flipgrid, or maybe they want to share it in the class. Okay, so allowing those shy students an opportunity to record themselves um, can really help them with their nerves and not having to go in front of the class to present. So again, giving that student choice can help build that relationship and that ownership piece. Um, so this or that has really helped because it's allowed every part of the lesson to kind of be a choice for the students. And it's not overwhelming for students either because it's just two choices. Do you want to do this or do you want to explore the content by this way? 
do you want to read by going this way? Or do you want to read taking notes this way? Um, do you want to connect doing this or do you want to do that? And so again, this has been really helpful in our uh, own district for students to really kind of latch on to their learning. And then choice boards. So very similar to this or that boards, um, choice boards are a great way to also help students. And so um, choice boards can be kind of multiple different ways. You could do that kind of this or that board, or a lot of times teachers will have like a final project and with their final project, they can make it a choice board. And so a lot of times when um, students are creating, they're kind of thinking about, okay, what might I have my students do? Okay, so that allows all these different choices to kind of allow to come apart. So again, a lot of times I see choice boards at the end for end kind of products that we want our students to create. And so maybe we want them to create a wee video, or maybe we want them to create a Google Slides presentation, or maybe we want them to create a podcast or um, some type of activity. And so it again, allows that choice in the classroom for students to create all of these different activities. Here is another example of a choice board. You can make this so your students have to complete this top row. So you would put all your like must do activities up here. And then down below, these are like your can do activities. Students would do these activities after they do that top row of learning, then they're ready to extend their knowledge and complete some of these other tasks around. So choice words can look very different. And what I love is that you can, you can add like a must do area first and then you get choice. Um, so again, adding that voice and choice. Yes, I love what you said, May. Support the idea of empowering students through the voice and choice scheme. Love that. Yes, we have to raise their voices up to be able to hear. Also with this choice pyramid, maybe you have them start at level one. You pick one activity at level one, then you go up to level two, level three, level four. And so again, you're pushing that DOK, that depth of knowledge up for students. Um, so that way they can be better students and understand what they're supposed to do. There's also like tic-tac-toe boards where students can use these X's and O's and then they have to get maybe three in a row to complete their activity. So it doesn't matter what activities they do, um, they can just have to do three of them. So again, tons of different ideas of choice boards in this presentation. Uh, so feel free to use, make a copy of, and explore all of these different choices as well. So the next thing I kind of want to talk about is um, SEL. So that's social emotional learning. And I feel like maybe due to different circumstances, um, our students really need this piece. They can't learn from not having a relationship. And so because students need that relationship in the classroom, uh, SEL has been a huge shift in focus. I feel like when I was a student, SEL wasn't as a, much as a focus. And now that we've learned that relationships do matter in the classroom, it is becoming a really big spotlight in the classroom. And so now we're just gonna kind of explore three different ways that you could add some check-ins with your students that are easy, um, that get to the point right away, and you can kind of start to build those relationships. And so this first one is, how are you feeling today? And so this one is on a scale. And what is so fun about this one is there's all these different um, scales out there. And if you just search on Google on a scale, if you go to images, you can probably find all of these um, fun, like on a scale of, let's see here, cats. You can find all of these different on a scale activities. So, and just a quick Google search can take you there. Um, so then you can just ask your students, well, how are you feeling? And so let's go ahead and let's look at this cat one. And let me know in the chat, how are you feeling today? Are you a one where you're really exhausted? Uh, maybe you're a two where you're like, oh, I want to know more, you know? Uh, maybe you're a three and you're just like, oh my gosh, it is um, midweek and I am just feeling crazy. Um, 
four, maybe you've got that like little smirk on your face. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. I like number nine. He's got that hat. So would love to see um, how you're feeling today. Just with that quick number, throw it in the chat. And based on this, I've seen a lot of teachers add these to a Google form. So what they'll do is they'll take their cat and they'll add that to a Google form and they can add another question. So using Google Forms and using that on a scale activity, and there's more right here in this slide deck. Um, this is on slide number 10. You can kind of see here that students have all of these different options where maybe they're doing the ducky one. Maybe they're doing Brutus the Buckeye where I'm from, Ohio State. Maybe they're doing on a scale of turtle, um, on a scale of slimes. Like there's so many of these that you can do a different one every single day. And what's great again about this is you can add these to a quick Google form and you're able to quickly kind of get a view for how your students are feeling. So right here, um, let's go ahead and paste this in. This is kind of an example of a Google form that I've used. So this one is on a scale of sloth. I asked for an email address and I can even just collect it. Um, if I'm in for my students, I can ask for their name. And then I can have that photo right in here. I can just embed that photo right into my Google Forms. And then my, quickly, my students can quickly respond with how they're doing. I really like number eight here. Um, and then they can say, do I need a teacher check-in, yes or no? So do you wanna chat with me about what is going on? Um, so that can be really, really helpful. And so again, you can just search all of these fun on a scale activities in Google and all of these different options will come up and then you can find what one's going to be best for you in your classroom uh, that your students will really enjoy. And I love these because like maybe your students are into cats and you have some other type of connection. You can definitely find those different things as well. Okay, and I really quickly want to talk about something as well with these on a scales. So typically my students come in the classroom, they do these on a scale activities quick. Um, the first thing that they do is they come in and they do that on a scale. Once they get going, I also typically have like a roadmap format. And because of that, a roadmap can have videos embedded. So nowadays, I use screencast via Loom, all of those different video ways to record. And it's quick. I do a one take. I quickly talk about my content in like four minutes or less. And then I can add that video link right onto my roadmap. I try to make my videos throughout the roadmap so my students can re-watch me. They can re-listen to what I'm saying. And because of those SEL check-ins and I'm using video, I now have time to pull a student and say, hey, you said you wanted a teacher check. You said that you were a number six. What's going on today? And I can quickly build that relationship with that student. So pairing these two together of blended learning and on a scale, allows me to have that time that I didn't before. When I was teaching direct instruction, when I was up front of the room, I didn't have time for those teacher check-ins. But now that I've moved my format, I can check in one-on-one -on -one with my students because I'm using both of those shifts together. So it's kind of exciting to see how these two can go really well together. This other idea I found on um, Twitter, and it was a really cool idea that it's a daily discussion. And so um, in our Google group, if you want access to all of these different resources, um, you can just go over to goldedu.org. And if you go over to resources, all you'll do is you click this link and you'll join our Google group. Um, this one is a collaborative slide, so it is restricted to only the gold community. So if you wanna join, um, I'll put the link in the chat and then they can throw them in, in the chat as well. And just click join and then once you're in you'll have all of these access to some of these resources so for this one it was a collaborative slide deck with the community and um, going back to that global community that we talked about earlier you can again share this slide deck and multiple people from all around the world can add different ideas and thoughts right in this slide deck so if you want to share an idea for a daily discussion feel free to share um, I'll throw this link in at the chat, but again, you do have to join the gold group first in order to join. And so for this one, what they did is they talked about which is more important, speaking or listening, okay? So you just ask a question. 
first, which is more important, family or friends? Which is more important, bacon or sausage? Uh, which is more important, dogs or cats? And so let's go ahead and let's do one of these. Um, let's find, let's find a good one. Oh, okay. Um, what is more important, cake or pie? So go ahead and put in the chat what you think is more important. Do you think cake is more important or do you think pie is more important? And what I love about this activity um, is that students turn and talk. So it's like a think, pair, share. Students will turn and talk to their friend next door and then they're gonna have a class conversation. So students will turn and talk. They'll talk about whatever is going on in the uh, during that debate of if they want cake or pie. And then once they decide that turn and talk, they then will have a class discussion. And I made these timers because I, I'm obsessed with making timers. So it will go for one minute and the students just quickly talk with their partner. Um, so allowing that think time for some of those students, some of our students need additional processing time before they can just have a whole group instruction. And so once they just talk, then after the minute, there's a four minute timer right in this timer. So again, this timer is really helpful. They have that minute, then there's that four minute class conversation. Okay, so they're talking about if they rather have cake or pie. And it's just building those relationships. Yeah, they're silly questions, but it's really building and getting to know students. We might find out that Johnny's grandma owns a bakery. And so on the weekends, he goes and he helps grandma at the bakery. Um, we might find out some of these different things just through these this or that type of questions uh, that students are answering. And some of them, again, they're just fun. They make students laugh um, and they're just fun to kind of have as well. And you can kind of allow this to go with your curriculum as well. So if you're teaching something, maybe you can add a this or that to help that prior knowledge. Um, so maybe you might ask like division or fractions and you can then have the students have a discussion about all of these different activities. And again, it's a quick one, five minute activity, one minute turn and talk. And then four minutes, we're going to talk as a class. As soon as that timer's over, we're going to get started for the day. So fun activity to start the class or maybe end your class um, with what you kind of want to do as well. Yeah, I love what um, you said in the chat. It just She just loves uh, this daily discussion activity. It engages the students in meaningful conversation where they are and also they can listen to others. That is a skill that we need is to listen to others. So often we have students and they don't listen or adults even, we don't listen. And this activity does, they're turning and talking. And so you can set it up to where 30 seconds, you're listening. One student is talking for that 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds is up. Now that next student is sharing their idea. So you could do it that way to kind of start modeling that. Um, you can also do some sentence starters if you needed to do some sentence starters. Um, so you could say like, I prefer, and then dot, 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 because if that would help your students. Um, there's so many different ways that this can connect with students and you can slowly remove those scaffolds as your students get used to those procedures. Yeah, it builds friendships and respect for each other too. And I just love it too, because you're right. How many times are we like, oh my gosh, I love the color pink. And you're like, me too. And then you're like, we're instant friends because we have that connection. Um, so just a quick fun activity and feel free again, once you join that Google group, if you have an idea, add it to the slide deck. A lot of these came from our community members. Um, and so they were a lot of fun. All right, so then the last one is number three. Um, our students, they might want some prizes, right? So we got to build some prices right in to some of our different um, activities. And so what we have here is a Google Sheets, okay? And so on this Google Sheets, what I like to do is I might highlight this and I'm gonna make it um, transparent. So I'm just gonna go in here and you can kind of see, you can't see the text that I had. All you can see is these blue boxes, okay? And so because of that, um, what my students would do is they would pick a box. So if they are showing 
really good behavior. Maybe they met my expectations. Maybe they got transition or they got started right away. Or during the daily discussion, my students answered that really, really well. They were able to go in, they were able to listen, they were able to respond. And then our class discussion, it just went really great. They learned to be, you know, great listeners, um, co-learners. Yeah, I love that idea in the chat, co-learners as well. So because they did great, what they'll do is they come in here and they would pick. They would go, I want to see uh, 3C. And they click that box or I would click that box because it's a class reward. And then I can do reset. And then the students have an activity to do. So right here, they have spin, uh, send some gratitude. Try to say thank you to five people today. And so with these activities, they're just building that classroom culture. They're just fun activities. And every single day, you would pick another box. So what students would do for this activity is they would send some gratitude. Um, maybe they tell the custodian, hey, thank you so much for what you do every single day. Maybe they tell a teacher, their parent, a friend. And it's just kind of building that positive classroom culture that they can do. And then right here, they might go to um, 4B. And again, you just would unhighlight it. So you would reset it. And it says a three, two, one. And so then we would click this link and we would see what activity the students would do. Okay, we're gonna today talk about three things you're looking forward to between now and May. Two things that you have learned um, in this class this year. One thing that you wish your teacher knew about you. Okay, and again, it's a quick activity building that classroom culture up and all the students do is you can pick a different student every day. Maybe one student goes, okay, I want 3E and you just click 3E and you can go right here and you can just ask your students. Okay, how do you like your sandwiches? Maybe you like them half down. How do you like it? Cut. Okay, again, it's just a fun activity to build that positive classroom culture uh, in your classroom. So you might do this um, instead of the daily discussion. You might do one at the beginning, one at the end. Um, you might do an on a scale. You can kind of switch this up. You, I've also seen teachers like Monday is on a scale. Tuesday is daily discussion. Wednesday, I'm going to do uh, the monthly challenge. And then Monday or Thursday, I might do on a scale. And then Friday, my students might pick which three of these activities they want to do. So you can switch it up. You can do multiple in one day, uh, depending on how much time you want to spend on these different activities. But again, it's just a fun way to kind of get students to think. And all you have to do here is unhide it. And then right here, compliment a classroom or a teacher. Quick activities that every single student can do throughout the day. And then there are different ones for different months. Uh, this is, again, another collaborative slide deck. So once you join that gold group, you're able to come in and you can add additional ideas um, that might go well with these different challenges. Um, so people had some really great ideas, and we're still building this out. So feel free to add your ideas here. You can also reuse ideas as well. So um, you can do that as well. So again, you can do this if everybody did something really well, students get to pick a prize reward off the board, or you can do it where it's just the start of your day. Multiple different ways, no really wrong way to do this. Um, so you can kind of customize it for what your class and what your students need. Okay, the next thing is ownership. So before um, one of the shifts I saw, or when I was in the classroom, is that ownership piece. When I was in the classroom, the teacher had ownership. The teacher led maybe that uh, the lesson. They, they, they owned the lesson. Now I'm starting to see students take over the ownership and start to really invest in their learning. And so with ownership, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. One of my favorite ways, and again, I found this idea on uh, Twitter, is this wonder wall. So this wonder wall asks three questions, pretty much. What are we learning? Why are we learning it? And how will I know I've learned it? These are three questions that John Hattie believes every student needs to know. And when you ask these questions, it really does take that ownership off of the teacher and places it on the students. And why I like this wonder wall is because students have an overview for the week. 
they get to know when um, different projects are due. They can have different teacher check-ins if needed. They can kind of get a quick outline for, hey, when things are due and what to kind of expect for the week. And so in this slide deck, this has a bunch of different resources. So slide number two is the Wonder Wall. Down here was a project that students did, and you can see a roadmap example in here, and this is for Wii Video. Now, this roadmap was for the old Wii Video, so there are some changes that Wii Video has made that this roadmap has not shown, but it, you kind of can able to see an example worked out. So for this activity, students, what they were learning, they were learning how to uh, explain plot without giving away the ending. So that was kind of like the main focus is they were trying to learn how to explain what's going on in this story without giving away the ending. Their goal was to create a book trailer. Um, and so to do that, they couldn't give away every single detail. They had to give away just a little bit. Then we talked about why are they learning it? So when we talked about why are they learning it, they were learning to practice summarizing and they were trying to make video editing skills because so many jobs in today's world require video editing. And there's not a whole lot of maybe training that you might get. You might just be asked, hey, edit this video without any training. And so we started to want to train our students on some of these 21st century skills. And then we wanted to talk about when will you know that you have learned it? So students will know that they've learned it when they have finished their book trailer um, and it will summarize what they kind of learned. And students did amazing on this big project because everything was broken down for them. They knew what they were doing. They knew why they were doing it. And then they knew when they had it done because everything was outlined for the students. It was broken down for them. And then here is a weekly breakdown. So this was like a four day week um, and students on Monday they had a storyboard. So how are we going to get to that end goal of you finishing your book project that summarizes the book, Touching Spirit Bear, and not giving away the ending? That was the goal. And so to get to our goal, we had to break it down into multiple different days. So every student could see, hey, this storyboard part is going to lead to my finished product. This wee video overview, I'm learning how to use it. It's going to lead me to be able to create my own video by Thursday. I'm gonna need to know how to log into Wii Video. Okay, so students needed to do that on Monday. So what they did is they had this roadmap and there were, again, different videos embedded into uh, this roadmap and students could watch these videos. It freed me up because I was able to clone myself as a teacher and place myself in here for my students to be able to watch all of these different Wii videos. And because of that, I was able to meet with my students one-on-one -on -one in conference with them. I was able to ask them questions. I was able to help them uh, think and think out of the box and be like more of that thought partner rather than being that main source of um, delivery for my students. And I even told my students, these black boxes are can-do activities. You don't have to do it. If you already know we video, guess what? You get to skip over them and you just have to do the project. If you don't know how to use Wii Video, you might want to watch these videos. So I was able to set up these must do and can do type of activities for my students. So that way they knew. So again, I'm combining blended learning with ownership with SEL. So my students came in and they maybe had a discussion question. After we got going, we talked about our Wonder Wall. And then we would talk about Tuesday. <clears throat> So on Tuesday, we're gonna start the video. You're gonna start the game board if you need it. And then we're gonna start with green screen. So what my students then had is they had, again, their game board. They were able to go through the different steps. And again, they were going back to this end goal. When will I know I have learned it? When you have created that book trailer at the very end is when you're gonna know. That ownership piece was being taken off of myself and put on my students they were starting to take ownership of their learning and they were able to really focus in on what they needed to do. Then on um, Wednesday, they had all day to just finish their video. So what I did on Wednesday is I just quickly went over the Wonder Wall again. I said, just a reminder, your finished product, we will know when you have learned it, is that book trailer. Um, and then we were able to take this and 
we can take what they have learned and we're able to apply it down um, on these different activities. So then the students had like a rubric and they were able to self check themselves before turning in their work. They were able to have a scrum board to quickly say, okay, on day one, this is where I finish. On day two, um, I'm over here. On day three, I am ready for a mishal inspection. Okay, so my students could see their progress because we use these little dots. We also paired it with um, Pear Deck so they could quickly put a dot as well so I could see everybody's screen um, all in one. And so then on the last day, it was time for peer review. And so my students were going back to that main goal. When will I know you have learned it? And then they'll go back and they'll be able to um, kind of think about that as well. And so here, the students then did this project and they were able to do a gallery walk. So um, for the people is a edu protocol. And what they did is they watched three to four different videos. And once they watched those three to four different videos, they gave feedback using a Google form. And on the Google form, it was pretty quick. Uh, the students, they just went in and they asked, they were asked different questions. So for example, here, they picked the video that they were watching. And then once they did that, they picked their home room and then they just rated it quickly, one through four. And then at the very, very end, they put one thing they really liked and one thing they would change. So again, they just kind of used the rubric that we provided and the students did it. And so that was their final kind of rating, their feedback. And what was really cool about this is students went in and made changes because they saw all of these different changes uh, in their, their feedback, they went back and revised because they had that ownership. They wanted to make it better. And so then after that, we looked at their scores and if it looked good, it went in the grade book. If it was a low score, we as the teachers had an option to go in and watch that video, make a decision. Okay, this is the final score for that activity. So we always had that option, but we were able to use the student feedback to really give them um, feedback as well. So just a really fun activity uh, that students were able to use in the classroom. And then the learning plan. So this is just another idea. Um, and this is student developed. So maybe you scaffold this at first. But this, again, is student developed. So what students do is they have this plan. And with this plan, they come in and they put in, what do I need to know? What is the learning target today? OK, so again, students put in what they want to know, uh, what the learning target is. Once they do that, they will then talk about how they will show that they've known it. So how will I show that I know it? Maybe I do a hands-on activity. Maybe I'm going to take a quiz. Maybe I'm going to teach my partner and I'm going to self-evaluate. Or maybe I'm going to come up with something else. So now the students are coming up with this idea. Where before, in the Wonder Wall, everybody was coming up with this goal. Okay, so it depends on the project. It depends on your standards. It depends on what you're teaching. So right here, um, let's say we're doing math, okay? So maybe we have fractions or something like that. What we might do is that... Students, we want to know what they need to know. So with fractions, they need to know how to change. Um, they need to know how to change the denominators. They need to know how to add straight across once they do that. Okay, so that's two skills right there. So I'm going to maybe put, um, I need to know how to add fractions. That might be my learning target, my goal. How will I know I do it? Okay, if I'm doing a hands-on activity with fractions, um, I might have students that have maybe manipulatives and like fraction strips and they're kind of adding and subtracting, but we're focusing on adding. So they're going to be using those to kind of show their answer. Maybe it's a partner quiz where they have um, a quiz and they're working together with a partner. Maybe they're teaching how to add fractions to their partner. And maybe they did this through video. They could do this in person. Or maybe they're going to do like a worksheet or maybe they're going to come up to the teacher and teach me. Okay, so they'll pick one way that they want to show that they have mastered fractions. Once they do that, they're going to come up with what proficiency looks like. So what is it going to look like for me to be able to solve fractions? And students are going to really look at how they are going to show it. Am I going to get three out of five right? 
Am I going to change the denominator? Am I going to change the top number, the numerator? Am I going to add straight across? Am I going to be able to simplify? What is it that we're looking for these students to be able to do? And then if they don't get it, what's going to be their option? Maybe they do a con lesson, a Zern lesson. Maybe they practice with myself. Maybe they watch a video. Maybe they ask a neighbor. And so after all of that, then it's what will I do if I already know it? What's going to be that next step? What's going to be that extension? Do they want to help a friend? Do they want to do makeup work? Maybe an escape room, extended activity. Maybe they have a choice board. Okay, so you can really dive in. So maybe with fractions, one of the choices that I might pick is taking a recipe and changing the recipe so that I double it or I triple it for some type of activity that I'm planning a party. So again, taking that activity and extending it for when our students get it. So this would be done at the start of the lesson. And students, again, just go in and they would just kind of go through and create their learning plan for what they expect out of this week, out of this unit, um, out of this lesson. So just a way to help with that ownership piece. And then tracking sheets. So students, because we have blended learning, we have them working at their own pace. You're like, how am I going to manage this as a teacher? Because it can be difficult. And so because they are trying to manage all of this as a teacher, um, this could be one way. So right here is a tracking sheet that I've created. And if you go here, it will change different colors as the students do these act different activities. So you can write all of your different levels, all your different activities out here. And anytime students get to a black line, that's a teacher check. They have to check in with me. Um, what students typically do, if you don't in inspect their work, they're probably not going to do it. So whatever we ask them to do, you need to inspect their work. So checking in with students and seeing, okay, what is going well? What is not going well? How can we kind of correct this? So in here, students would just come in and they can say, hey, I'm finished with this activity. I'm working on this. This student might be working on this and then maybe they finish this one. You can decide, do they have to do every step in order? Or can you maybe have them go in whatever order they want? So you can decide that as a teacher. You can write your task up here or on a roadmap, you can add little circles to the numbers and you can say, okay, what box are you at? So maybe on this roadmap, I would add like a circle or this one, for example, and maybe they're at number one, maybe they're at number three, maybe they're at step five, and then they can go on here and I can have those aligned with my roadmap. So just a way to kind of pair those together again, um, because you're able to kind of do all of that together um, might be really helpful. And then over here, I can say, hey, I need help. Check me. The t I need a teacher's check or I'm good. So students can quickly communicate with you by using this column in A to really reach out and ask for additional support if they need to. And you're able to conference again with your students really quickly by just kind of seeing, okay, I need to check in with that student number five. I need to go see um, student number nine. So I might, because that student really needs help, they're probably stuck. I might check in with that student first, or I might have them go to an expert in our classroom. And then over here where it says location, um, I can quickly kind of see the location in my students if they needed to use the restroom or go to the office or go to the media center. I can quickly um, check that as well. <clears throat> so our next shift in education is checkpoints. So with checkpoints, um, I like to use a scrum board. And we've talked about a scrum board before where students have maybe a Pear Deck or students have a Google Slide. And so in this slide, students again can take this day and they can say, okay, day one, I got this done. Day two, I got this done. Day three, I got this done. And you can quickly kind of get a feel for how students are, where they're at in their pacing. So again, this just kind of helps with the management piece of all of this. And you can use that tracking sheet or you could use that scrum board. And I love the scrum board too, because you can kind of use this for different things as well. Like, um, okay. Sign up for your small group activity and you can have all of these different activities up on your scrum board and then students can quickly um, kind of check in with where they are and what they need. And then small group sign up. So right here is a sign up. 
and students can sign up with whatever activities they might need help for. So these are small group activities um, and students can sign up for an activity and they can talk about what they might need assistance with. I need assistance with my video. So they would sign up here. I need help with my evidence for my podcast. I need help with my one pager. I need help with my infographic. They sign up for what small group they want to attend. And then I'm able to conference with them exactly where they need. Again, that's using that ownership piece to kind of track and check in with students. And then with this learning log, students are able to complete different check-ins. And so having a learning log can really help. And so when you're working throughout a roadmap or working throughout a different activity, students can use this learning log right here and there's different checkpoints. So this is an example um, for social studies of religions or regions and students have a task. Why is the Salt Lake uh, significance to the surrounding the lake? And then they can respond. And then right here would be the uh, teacher initial. So then teachers are able to initial as soon as they check in with their students. So again, on that roadmap, there were different checkpoints and teachers are able to check in with their students. So right here would be a checkpoint and the students would do this first task and then you would initial real quick to kind of make sure that they're in the right path. And if they needed to make any corrections, they can do that. So then motivation. So now we're going to talk about motivating our students um, because we have to figure out how are we going to motivate our students? And there's a lot of different ways. So this first thing right here, this is a preference and reinforcer assessment. And so what students can do is they can do all of these different activities and students, you would pick one. So there's all of these different choices that you can pick for these um, different assessments, and you just have to pick one for your students. So right here, um, students, one of my favorite ones is this forced choice reinforcement. So then you would go to slide number six. So again, right here, you're looking at all of these different choices on surveys that you can use to help get your students motivated to figure out what motivates them. So this is kind of a pre-assessment for your, your students. So on slide six, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this. And what you're going to do is you make a copy of the Google Sheet. Because once you make a copy of the Google Sheet, my friend Luis, uh, he did a lot of different formatting in this sheet. And so then I can see all of these sample responses. And so right here, if I go in and I go to tools and I go to um, manage form, I can go to the live form. And once I'm in the live form, it's just two quick choices. Which would you pick? Teachers write it's 100 on your paper or be the first to finish your work. Again, students can just quickly decide which one they want to do. And they can, again, quickly go through and pick this or that kind of activity. Once these scores have gone through the system, students will get and you can get this type of um, Google slide that allows you to see, okay, what does this student need? Okay, they really like these independent rewards. They're motivated by this, they're motivated by that. So again, you can go in and you're able to kind of see your choices and how students respond and how you're going to handle all of those different situations. So again, I can just kind of look real quickly and I can say, oh, this student got uh, number nine on adult approval. So when I'm working with that student, I need to praise them. I need to say, hey, great job with this. Hey, good job doing this. And I'm able to really help them. So there's, again, tons of different assessments here that you're able to use. And you can kind of decide which one is best for your students in your uh, class. And then executive functioning skills. Um, so after I know what motivates my students, some of the things that we're seeing lacking in classroom management or classroom as a blended learning is these executive functioning skills. And so with executive functioning skills, we use these to do school. We use this, uh, these skills to help us. And so in this slide deck, there are a bunch of different executive functioning skills. 
there's a pre-assessment. So your students can take a quick pre-assessment um, on executive functioning to see how, where they rate, where are they lacking in all of these different skills. So um, again, there's a couple different versions. There's a parent versions if you work with younger students. There's also an older version where students can do this by themselves. And so again, you'll make a copy of that Google Sheet. Once you have a copy of that Google Sheet, you will be able to get access to that Google Form. So right here is that Google Sheet. And then students, when they take this, you can see all of their different executive functioning. And you can see that my lowest score um, right here was planning and prioritizing. Okay, so this is a skill that I really need to work on. Then I might want to work on flexibility. Then I might want to work on my stress tolerance. Okay, so I'm looking at all of these different skills to kind of help me um, with blended learning and to help me be a better student. Once I know that information, then I can go in and I can work with my students one-on-one. -on -one. Another thing that I like to do is right here. I want you to think about one student, okay? And I want you to add a descriptor for that student. Maybe that one student's really lazy, stubborn, messy, disruptive. Um, maybe they're unmotivated or forgotful. And so with this, you're thinking of that descriptor for that student. Okay, I'm going to give you like a couple minutes just to think about that student. And feel free to pause if you're still thinking. But once you have that for your, that student, they're probably struggling with executive functioning skills. So now that you've kind of thought about that one student, Maybe you said they were lazy. Well, maybe they need help with their goal. Maybe they need help with their attention. Maybe they're stubborn. Maybe they, again, need help with goal setting. Maybe they need help with like flexibility. Maybe they're messy. So you need to help them with organization. Maybe they are unmotivated. So maybe you need to work on time management and planning. So I love that it takes some negative effects of students and we're able to look at them with an executive functioning eye. So how we think about our students' behavior can really change the way that we think and can help understand what's really going on and why support might be needed. We've got to know the child and not the behavior. So once we know that all of these different things, we can then really start to focus on the issue. So you can do this with that pre-assessment or you can do this just by this quick assessment of you thinking about that one student that might be driving you crazy. Their behavior is getting to your last nerve. And so when you're thinking about that, really thinking about, okay, their issue is organization. So what you can do on this resource is you can go to slide number one and you can go up here to organization. And if I click slide 11, it's gonna give me strategies to help this student get organized. So that way that behavior of messy is gone. They're able to be more organized in the classroom. And so they can maybe do a Google, hey, organize my life, quick mini lesson. Maybe we can end the day with an agenda of cleanup. Hey, you need to put this in this folder. You need to do this. Adding that quick time in might allow that messy student to be not as messy. Maybe they are struggling with um, attention. There's all of these different ways to help students with their attention and to really help them focus in. So again, using that pre-assessment or using this quick one assessment of thinking of what is that student? What describes that one student? And then working on these executive functioning skills can help with that blended learning, can help with your check-ins, can help know what students need in order to be successful in school. And then students, they need motivation to work as well. And so this is a great way. So maybe you have done the survey and you're trying to motivate your students. Maybe you're focusing on executive functioning skills. Now you can use this quick activity to really help students work. So what it is, is students work for a set amount of time. And then they have time to reset. They have time for a break. So with this activity, students will have a timer of like 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. So right here is a quick video overview and then they have um, 20 minutes to work. So students are working for 20 minutes. You're focusing on two behavior goals. You wanna keep it kind of small. So goal number one is raising your hand to talk. We want our students to raise their hand when they talk. 
Goal two, we want them to use nice words with their friends. So those are the two goals I'm focused on because my students are really struggling with that. Figure out two goals that your students need, and then you'll set a timer. So when I set a timer, students will work for about 20, 25 minutes. After that time, they're going to come in and then they get a five minute break. So again, students will talk with a friend. They might do a go noodle activity. They might use tech time. They might draw for five minutes and then they might read a book. Okay. Again, I have my students attention for like 25 minutes and then they get a five minute break. They're more, um, active in their learning, they're focused, they're trying to get tasks done, and it's helping with some of those executive functioning skills like time management. And so after that timer goes off, students would get a break. Now, not every single student might be able to meet these goals. So what I do is you get one warning. If I have to go up to you and talk to you, I might go up and talk to that student and say, hey, this is your one warning. If they do it again, during this five minutes, they have a reflection time with me. And we're talking about like, what challenges did you have during this time? Um, what was maybe a success you felt? I mean, after I gave you that redirection, you, you did really well, but then at this mark, you did it again. So do I need to do something to help you? Another question you could ask is like, how can I help you? What can we do to really get this um, going and helpful in your own so you're successful? And then we restart the timer. So after their five minute break, we restart that timer and students come in again and they get another five break. I did this with a class um, and with the class, we had students who were redirected. And then after they were redirected, uh, the students didn't need that second five minute meeting with me. They were able to have their free time because we were able to work together. It was more of a partnership of me asking like, how can I help you? And so what I did the next time around is I looked at them. I said, you're doing great. And giving them that positive feedback to them really helped um, shift that student's behavior in that classroom. And so thank you so much for joining with me today. I would love to hear in the chat, maybe what was your favorite idea or strategy or shift that we talked about? And if you want more, uh, feel free. Again, you can go to gold.edu and on our website, we have a bunch of different um, things. You can learn more about gold. You can see some of our fun make and take sessions where we create together and we have like a collaborative um, type of activities. You can also explore different resources. So maybe you want to find out more or explore more. Uh, you can see kind of a quick description of all of these different resources and then grab that slide deck. Um, also, I just started a new podcast. It's called Control the Chaos and it's kind of focused on um, executive functioning type of skills, classroom management. And so I would love for you to listen along. We just launched our um, episode zero, which was like our intro. And we're going to start episode number one next week. So feel free to subscribe and listen to the podcast to get some just ideas on how to control the chaos in different classrooms as well. And again, feel free to follow me on Twitter or reach out to me on Twitter and feel free to throw any questions that you might have in the chat. Um, I really enjoyed talking about different shifts that we're exploring. Um, and again, I'd love to see what takeaways did you have from this session? Thank you, Ms. Uh, Stephanie, for that uh, for the discussion on the different shifts. No? Uh, and really, really, our teachers are like, talking a lot no, in, in the chat and, and sharing their own um, uh, insights about it. Okay. Uh, personally, um, Ms. Uh, Steph, no, uh, I really love uh, SEL. That's one thing that uh, I re realized that we really, really need right now. Unfortunately, just to give you a context, maybe, no, uh, Ms. Steph, that's one thing that's very new to so many teachers no, and educators here in the Philippines. Okay? Uh, and our biggest concern um, with when it comes to SEL is that before we do SEL, uh, we have to work on our curriculum because our curriculum are too content heavy. So uh, in most cases, um, our teachers here in the Philippines cannot uh, like really integrate uh, the, the many notes, especially the activities that you have suggested okay? mm -hmm. because of the, the heavy content requirements of our curriculum. But we hope that uh, in the pandemic, okay, um, we, are, we were a little bit uh, shaken and um, we were forced to rethink about uh, our curriculum. And actually, during the pandemic, Ms. Stephanie, no, 
uh, we actually reduce our content already. Uh, and uh, that's a good, good sign. So hopefully we get to integrate this as well. So teachers, please do let us know in the chat um, what your um, uh, what your insights are, um, your favorite shifts maybe, just like what I what I have no uh, how I love uh, SEL. Okay, I also love the the one on uh, ownership okay? um, on on teaching our students no, uh, being more uh, having owning their no, no, their their learning process. Okay, because for the most part, uh, teachers are uh, students are usually just following uh, instructions. Okay doing what's being said, but I really love that idea. But maybe I have a question while we're waiting also for questions, uh, Miss Stephanie, you know, in the chat, okay? Yeah. Uh, when we talk about ownership, okay, uh, so what what would exactly be the shift in the role of the teacher? Because when you, like, when you uh, design uh, activities with uh, student ownership, okay, uh, definitely the teacher's role is shifting somewhere, okay? Because mm -hmm. you're not anymore the, the source of information, the source of knowledge, okay? So where is the teacher going to stand when we um, uh, promote uh, that uh, ownership uh, for our students? Yeah, and I think we definitely need teachers. Like robots are not taking over the job. Um, that is for sure. Your role just looks different. So before you might have been up in the classroom teaching, where now when our students have ownership, you might be moving around the classroom, checking in with students, or Maybe you have your own station at a desk that might be like um, a great way for students to come in and collaborate. And so with that, you're able to check in with students one on one. You might be able to meet small groups with those students, but your role just looks different. So, again, you might be up and moving around or you could be like at your station kind of sitting there waiting for students. Um, we have an app. Um, it's called Classroom Q. Have you heard of it? No. Yet. Okay. So Classroom Q, it's a really cool website. Can I share my screen again? Yes, sure, Miss. <laughs> All right. So with Classroom Q, what you can do is you would, you're a teacher, so you would sign in as a teacher. And then I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay. And you can sign in with Google, which is really lovely. <laughs> and what you can do is I'm going to start this session. And so when I start this session, you would type in this class code. Okay, so students, okay, so students would go to this go class to code. This class code. Um, I can also um, share the So if I go into this other account, and I'm going to paste this right here, I'm going to put my name. And then I might put, I have a question. Um, I'm going to just say teacher check-in. System needed. On here, I can see that this student needs a teacher check-in. So then I'm able to conference with that student right away. Another student might come in. Let's see here. And I'm going to put John. And he might say, restroom, because a lot of times students have to use the restroom. And I can say, John, you can go to the restroom, and I can cross him off the list. And then I can say, OK, I've met my friend. And then students have like a cue of when they're going to meet with me. It's very nice. It's uh, really nice for classroom management, especially in an online uh, setup. Thank you, Miss, for that. Classroom Q. Okay, so teachers, let's uh, do explore that. Okay. So, uh, teachers, uh, other questions or anything else okay, that um, you may want to ask uh, to our speaker for today? Let's maximize. Although, again, uh, I'd like to extend our thanks again. Um, by the way, just to let our teachers know, it's already around 6.30 a.m. No? Uh, Ms. Stephanie Howell woke up really early for our session for today. No? And again, um, always, always appreciate the time, Ms. Uh, Ms. Stephanie, for, for the Philippine community. Okay? Um, yeah, teachers, thank you for, me for the day. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thanks. Thank you, too. Um, when, Maybe what other question that I have, uh, Miss Stephanie, is that uh, when when thinking about this these different shifts, okay, uh, what what would be that um, the tip that you can give to our teachers, okay, in absorbing maybe and not getting lost in these so many shifts in education, okay? as maybe because sometimes it can get uh, really mm -hmm. overwhelming, uh, knowing all these shifts, everything happening, uh, you're at checking assessments, 
your your developing designing lesson plans and then you're teaching uh in an actual uh setup and then thinking all of this now so uh with with your uh, expertise no, and our, also your experience how should teachers approach these kinds of shifts and um integrate them uh into uh, their own uh, teaching styles yeah so a big one is blend and learning can be a lot but I think you have to think like before when I was teaching direct instruction, I was planning every single night. I was planning every day where with blended learning, it's more batch planning. So I might spend a couple days batch planning my lessons, but then that lesson is ready for the week. So then I can quickly kind of go over with my students. Um, hey, like this is the lesson you're going to focus on this for two weeks and those two weeks, you're not lesson planning. You're not grading because you're doing that feedback during the class period. And I think too, focus on one thing. There is a lot and there are a lot of shifts that we might have to feel like we have to make. But if you can batch plan as much as possible, that's going to save you time in the long run. Um, also pick one thing. So if you're like, okay, SEL is something I need to work on, work on that. Okay, don't worry about that blended learning piece yet. That might be helpful, but really just focus in on one area that you want to improve on. So I know I gave a lot of strategies today, um, but your goal was to find one thing. Your goal is not to do everything. Your goal is just to pick one thing that you can take away. And guess what? This is recorded. So you can come back at a later date and you can go, oh, what did Stephanie say um, about blended learning? I'm ready for that. And when you're ready, you rewatch that section of this video and I'm here for you. Uh, so if you need that support or anything, reach out. I am here to support you. Thank you so much. No. And I can definitely attest to that, no, teachers. No, Miss Stephanie answers emails. Okay? And actually, she answers emails really fast. No, I, sometimes I, 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 I feel uh, ashamed of not replying as soon as I can. Uh, from uh, for her email, uh, from uh, to, her, to her emails because she really replies really fast. Very accommodating. Okay? So uh, I have two questions in the chat right now, uh, Miss Stephanie. I hope that we can still accommodate them. Okay, this is for uh, Teacher Lawrence. Okay, this is a, really a valid concern, no? uh, especially in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. We don't have too much access in technology. So are these shifts in any way going to be applicable or uh, will impact the Philippine education? Given that we don't have that much access to technology. Yeah. So with limited technologies, um, are we talking like five devices in a classroom type of limits? Um, to, to some extent, Miss Stephanie, uh, we have those kinds of uh, uh, setup to the to the extreme of not not no devices at all. Okay, like the yeah. remote areas. Okay, uh, yeah. where in during the pandemic we printed modules for them, learning packets. Yeah, so I think if you're limited with devices, um, maybe you make like a station. Okay, when you're ready for this, here's five devices and you go over to that area and you get on those um, activities. I think too, maybe we you can make some of them more paper type of activities or collaborative, having students work together in a group. Um, I think it definitely is a limit, but I don't think it's impossible. I think... It's just something that we have to work around and try to figure out and then advocate, try to advocate for, you know, more technology, explain the why, why is it needed? Why, why do you see such a benefit um, can really help as well? Because in our district, we had a person, um, this was like before I really got into technology that advocated. Um, so my boss, he was a great advocator. He talked about the why and how it was going to change student learning. And so we went one-to-one -one a lot faster than we would have because um, before COVID, we were one-to-one. -one. And because he was able to advocate why this was such an important. So when COVID came, it wasn't a huge shock to our district. Uh, we were ready. Our students had the devices. Our teachers knew how to use it. But it, it was because of that advocating that he did prior to knowing that COVID was even going to happen, you know. And because he advocated so much for uh, technology, it just, again, it allowed the students and teachers to be better prepared. But again, I don't think if you are limited and you just have a couple devices, make it a station, okay? Put it in that roadmap and just say, when you get there, you're going to go over to that station and do that activity. 
Um, I don't know if students can bring in devices if they have stuff from home, like bring your own devices in. But I know that can be a limit. So think creatively. Can they work in collaborative groups? Can they maybe do some type of other activity that is just as beneficial? Thank you, Ms. Stephanie. No, indeed, no, teachers, okay, let, let's be encouraged. No, it's possible. Okay? And I, I really love uh, Ms. Stephanie's idea on advocate, uh, advocating. Let's yeah. continue to speak, uh, converse, no, and um, maybe call the attention of our uh, Department of Education, and hopefully we get to have those devices no, um, uh, for our schools. Okay? Uh, actually, Ms. Stephanie, no, the second question is on the same um, uh, strand, so we'll no longer uh, ask that uh, because uh, she asked about um, applying it in remote areas, so basically mm -hmm. the same uh, extent. Okay? So anyway, uh, teachers, let's now uh, send our thanks to our uh, dear speaker for today no, in the chat no, so that she would feel, once again, no, the Filipino warmth no, that we uh, always are very proud of. Okay? So let's um, appreciate okay, uh, her time and expertise. And of course, okay, uh, Ms. Stephanie, we also like to uh, present no, this um, certificate of appreciation okay, for your time. Okay? So this certificate of appreciation is awarded to Ms. Stephanie Howell uh, for sharing her knowledge and expertise in the recently con um, concluded webinar entitled Top 5 Shifts in Education. Uh, awarded on March 24, 2022, uh, to be signed by the administrators of Kaagapay Teachers Support. Okay? Um, so thank you once again, uh, Ms. Stephanie, and we do appreciate your, your time and experience. But uh, may I just insist on one very short message for our teachers. Um, uh, Ms. Stephanie, just to give you a context, uh, the Filipino uh, educators now, are gearing towards um, um, going back to a face-to-face -face setup. Okay, yes, we're late. We're very, very late, but we're getting there now. So maybe it's like some words of encouragement so that our teachers no, uh, would feel uh, more empowered. Yeah, um, you can do it. It was scary for us at first, just that shift back. And um, a lot of students just needed us to love on them. They needed us that SEL piece. So really just build relationships first because – with being remote, students lost a lot of the friendships. They lost a lot of that connection piece. And so that's what I would suggest you focus on when you first come back with your students is that SEL piece. How can you check in on them? How can you maybe use that discussion type of question with your students? Um, and I think, too, if you are limited to face-to-face, uh, -face, there was a question in the chat, I think. It was like, if the SEL shift would be possible in limited case to face, um, given that we do not have access to internet. Okay, you can do it on paper. Take the activity, have students write it down, have them talk, have them do other activities. You don't necessarily have to do it with the internet. Um, you can just build relationships and chat with your students. Thank you so much for that, uh, Ms. Stefanino. And again, um... Your, your, your time and uh, experience is well appreciated here uh, in the Philippine community. So teachers, let's continue saying our thanks and appreciation to Miss Stephanie at, as we bid goodbye no, to Miss Stephanie. Okay? Thank and you, Miss Stephanie. You. Bye, guys. Stay thanks. safe and stay negative from COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> so teachers, um, thank you so much for, uh, for, um, have, you know, for joining our session for today. And uh, I know it, you're very busy. Teachers, I appreciate that you're, you're here you know, because I know how busy you are right now, how so many requirements and so many things that you're doing. Um, I just um, uh, talked to someone uh, in, the, in the chat earlier about having a webinar okay, or, um, uh, prior to this uh, session, but still thank you, uh, 159 of you here uh, joining our live session. And of course, teachers, let's punctuate no, and let's end our series with yet another amazing session okay? uh, and this one came okay, uh, will be looking at the um, the education in australia okay so we have invited some teachers in uh, in australia to talk about what are the different strategies uh, approaches and uh, things that are being done in australia and okay um we'll also have some conversations about their um their um their experience in the covid 19. did you know that in australia they only had two weeks of online classes. Like after um, after one, after uh, a while, no, uh, after two weeks, okay, they went back to face-to-face -to -face right away. Okay? So interesting to know how they did that no, during the pandemic. And 
it all is so it would definitely be uh, something to do with the very good uh, structure you know in place in uh, Australian education that allowed them to uh, do um or conduct education in face to face despite the pandemic so we'll we'll see we'll see that now we'll see about that on um on Saturday so teachers okay hope to see you all on Saturday that's going to be 2 to 4 p.m. will be joined by Miss Andrea Bigare and Mark Bigare no another couple educators okay so hope to see you on Saturday okay so teachers let's now have uh, our um our um evaluation okay so please evaluate this link at uh, this uh, session on this link okay? please do let me know if it's working that's uh, tinyurl.com global education 7 okay um let me also check uh, if it's working Yes, please do let me know in the chat if it's working. You can access the link and you can do the evaluation. If not, I'll do something about it. Okay. Ayan. Teachers, hindi pa accepting responses. Just open it. Okay. So uh, please refresh your links. Okay. Ayan. Okay. And then just let me know. So again, teachers, so thank you so much uh, for um, for um, uh, joining us again today. Um, and uh, we'll be having a short break next week. No? So there will be no sessions on Thursday next week and Saturday next week. No? That will be our sort of like transition to our April series. Okay? Working po according to teacher Yan. Unable to access. Uh, please refresh lang. Uh, I already refreshed the, ano, no, or opened the, uh, the, the link. Okay, So you can already access that. Should be able to access that. Um, we'll be taking a break next week. Uh, we'll, we'll have no sessions next week, okay? Just to give a breather, no? Okay, from March to April, okay? Because we had like so, a back to back to back <laughs> sessions. Now we have back to back from uh, from uh, January to February to March. So we'll take a breather first, one week breather, and then we'll pres uh, resume no on the um, 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 uh, next next week, okay? For our April series. So abangan natin our April series will be on. Microsoft Office 365. Uh, Teacher Glenda, uh, I'll look into that as well. No, please send me a message no in uh, my email or um para mas mabilis ko ma-respond. Okay? Yan. Thank you po. Maraming salamat, teachers, and have a great day. Uh, stay uh, negative from COVID-19. Uh, stay positive in life. Teachers, good luck for those who are already uh, doing face-to-face -face, uh, encounters. Okay? Please stay safe po. Maraming salamat. Talang. Yeah. <laughs>